All right, all of you. So good to see you all again. I hope you have understood the histology of the testes properly. Chal, good. So we now today go into the counterpart, the female reproductive system. What does the female reproductive system consist of? In males, we had the male gonad called as the testis, which produces sperm. In the female reproductive system, we have the gonads, the female gonads called as the ovaries. The ovaries produce the ovum or the egg. So the male gonads are the ovaries. From the ovaries, the eggs go into two tubes which are called as the fallopian tubes. Fallopian tubes also called as oviducts. And then we have the main organ which is called as the uterus. The baby develops inside the mother's uterus. And then we have the vagina. The erected penis is inserted in the vagina for a copulation or a sexual intercourse to take place. And then we have ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina and then we have the external female genital organ, the external view of the female reproductive system which is called as the vulva. So what is the female external genital organ called as the vulva? And then we have glands. In males we had glands, semi vesicle prostate gland, cowper gland. In females also we have three glands, namely vestibular, or Bartholin's gland. Vestibular or Bartholin's gland, paraurethral glands of skin, paraurethral glands of skin, and the breasts or the mammary gland. What are the breasts also called as the mammary gland? So these are the different parts of the female reproductive system. Let's start. First with the ovaries. The ovaries are the female gonads situated inside the abdominal cavity. The male gonads testes we remember were situated outside the abdominal cavity because spermatogenesis requires 34 degrees Celsius temperature. But in the female gonads, ovaries takes place oogenesis. Oogenesis takes place at a normal body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. So ovaries need not descend out of the body and the ovaries are present inside the abdominal cavity. One ovary on either side of the main organ called as the uterus. So, beach pe uterus hota hai aur dono sides pe ek ek ovary hoti hai. Each ovary is about 3 cm long, 2 cm broad and 1 cm in thickness. 3 by 2 by 1 cm in dimension, oval shape and pinkish in color. These ovaries are present near the fallopian tube. Mind you, the fallopian tube doesn't hold the ovary. The ovaries are not held by the fallopian tube. Between fallopian tube and ovary, there is a gap, there is a space. So ovaries are suspended in their position. Now, who suspends the ovary? If you remember, the testes were also suspended in the scrotal sac above by the spermatic cord and below by the gubernacular, which we remember were extensions of the peritoneum. Similarly, the ovary is 
is also supported by the peritoneum by which structures of the peritoneum so visualize suppose if i am standing like this this is the female reproductive system my two hands here are the ovaries so these are the two ovaries my two hands here are the fallopian tubes my body itself is the uterus the space between my legs is the vagina so this is the way the female reproductive system is located mind my position i'm standing like this the vagina is directed upwards and backwards and the uterus is directed upwards and forwards to so, vagina kaise hota hai up and back aur uterus kaise hota hai up and forward so vagina uterus this is the way i'm standing how will this entire female reproductive system be supported so suppose this is the female system and here we have the diaphragm diaphragm mein se arise hoti hai two membranes called as the peritoneum and the peritoneal membrane support the liver support the stomach support the kidneys on the back side and the two peritoneal membranes arise from diaphragm go downwards touch the uterus and when the peritoneal membrane touch the uterus each peritoneal membrane separate covers the uterus on the front side covers the uterus on the back side and supports the uterus in its position that fold of peritoneum supporting the uterus is called as the meso metrium what is the support of the uterus called as meso metrium and after supporting the uterus in its position the meso metrium now goes and covers the fallopian tubes on either side and the two membranes of the peritoneum support the fallopian tubes and fallopian tubes are held in their position that fold of peritoneum supporting the fallopian tubes is called as the meso salpix what is that called as the meso salpix so uterus is supported by meso metrium fallopian tubes are supported by the meso salpix and the meso salpix then continues down and is called as the broad ligament what is this area called as the broad ligament so this is the broad ligament and the broad ligament itself folds and forms a support of the ovary to the uterus broad ligament ovary it folds and forms a support to the uterus which is now called as the ovarian ligament what is that called as the ovarian ligament the ovarian ligament attaches the ovary to the uterus and broad ligament ovarian ligament and then the ovarian ligament covers the ovary and attaches it to the body wall side lateral body wall 
by a ligament which is called as the suspensory ligament. What is this ligament called as the suspensory ligament? So, here we have uterus, here we have ovary and ovary is attached to uterus by what ligament? Ovarian ligament and ovary is connected to the sides of the body wall by what ligament? Suspensory ligament. So, once again, ovary, what is this ligament called as the ovarian ligament? What is this ligament called as the suspensory ligament? And one more ligament connects the ovary to the back side. So ovary is a dorsal body wall. Piche tak jata hai. And that ligament which connects it to the back side is called as the mesovarium. What is that ligament called as the mesovarium? And the mesovarium is where you have blood vessels and nerves passing. Blood vessels and nerves pass through the mesovarium. So mesovarium is similar to the spermatic cord. If you remember, testis was suspended by spermatic cord. It had vast difference, blood vessels and nerves. Similarly, from the ovary to the back side goes the mesovarium and the mesovarium has in it blood vessels and nerves. So once again, how is the ovary supported? Please picturize this well. Diaphragm, peritoneum, Mesometrium. Suppose the uterus. Mesosalpins. Suppose the fallopian tubes. From the mesosalpins arises the broad ligament. Broad ligament folds to form ovarian ligament attaches it to the uterus suspensory ligament attaches it to the lateral body wall and mesovarium attaches it to the back side dorsal body wall and through the mesovarium pass blood vessels and nerves. So this is the mechanical support of the ovary. So ovary ko kaun kaun support karta hai? Ovary is attached to uterus by the ovarian ligament. Ovary is attached to the lateral body wall by suspensory ligament and to the back side by the mesovarium. What are the functions of the ovary? Uh, what is the function of testis? To produce male gamete sperm and male sex hormone testosterone. Similarly, ovaries produce the female gamete ovum or egg and it produces female sex hormones. Two sex hormones, namely estrogen and Progesterone. So testis produces testosterone, ovaries produce estrogen and progesterone, two female sex hormones which bring about lots of changes in the female body, which we will understand later. Which are the two hormones? Estrogen and progesterone. Then we have the fallopian tube. The fallopian tubes arise from the uterus run laterally, laterally away from the midline till near each ovary. Mind you, fallopian tube 
doesn't touch the ovary but it is present near each ovary each fallopian tube is about 10 cm long 10 cm in length very muscular in nature the distal end of the fallopian tube is dilated to form a funnel shaped region to ye hai ovary aur ye hai ek funnel and this funnel shaped region is called as the in fundibulum what is the funnel shaped region called as the in fundibulum the in fundibulum has many finger like processes attached to it which are called as fimbriae so we have fimbriae attached to it fimbriae and there is a small opening inside through which the egg will pass and that opening is called as the this opening is called as the ostium so what is the opening called as the ostium picture like that again here we have fallopian tube what is this broad dilated part called as the infundibulum what are these finger like processes called as fimbriae and the fimbriae suck the egg released from the ovary into a small opening what is that little opening called as the ostium so the egg will get sucked into the ostium of the infundibulum and once the fallopian tube sucks the egg it passes into the ostium from the ostium the egg will start moving with the help of delicate hair like cells which are called as ciliary cells तो ये जो छोटे छोटे सेल्स है वट आर दीज कॉल्ड आर सीलियरी सेल्स एंड सीलियरी सेल्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ फॉरवर्ड एंड बैकवर्ड मूवमेंट स्टार्ट पुशिंग द एज ऑल द वे फ्रॉम द फेलोपियन ट्यू इन टू द ज्यूटरस सो एग इज रिलीज ओवरी एग इज रिलीज द फिम्रिय मूव एंड suck the egg into the fallopian tube and then ciliary movement or cilia by they are forward and backward lashing movement to and fro these cilia move the egg towards the uterus just behind the infundibulum which is the big funnel shaped region is found a dilated portion that dilated portion of the fallopian tube is called as the isthmus sorry called as the ampulla the dilated part is called as the ampulla so ye kon hai infundibulum with fimbri uske piche the fallopian tube is dilated what is that dilated part called as the ampulla now when the egg is present in the ampulla this is the infundibulum and this part is the ampulla when the egg is present in the ampulla if at the same time copulation takes place if at the same time sexual reproduction takes place if the erected penis is inserted in the vagina and this ejaculation takes place sperm by their zigzag movement enter from the uterus into the fallopian tube and in the fallopian tube the sperm will go and fuse with the egg to form the zygote in other words fertilization takes place where the fertilization takes place 
Fertilization takes place in the ampulla of the fallopian tube. So where does fertilization take place in the ampulla? Fertilization takes place in the ampulla of the fallopian tube and just behind the ampulla, just behind the ampulla is found now a narrow region of the uterus which is called as the isthmus. What is the narrow part called as the isthmus? And isthmus then leads to a small part within the uterus and that part is called as the intrauterine segment. What is that part called as the intrauterine segment? So, which are the four parts of the fallopian tube? You have infundibulum with fimbriae, they suck the egg which passes into the opening called ostium and from ostium the egg will move with the help of cilia in the dilated part which is called as the ampulla and then cilia will pass the egg through a narrow part which is called as the isthmus and isthmus will open into a small part within the uterus called as the intrauterine segment. Where does fertilization take place in the ampulla? And this zygote form will now start moving with the help of cilia first lecture. I hope you all remember the zygote one cell will divide to form two cells. Two cells will divide to form four cells. Four cells will divide to form eight cells and eight cells will now form a 16 cell structure. That 16 cell structure is called as the morula and the morula now passes into the uterus and drops inside the uterus. So who drops into the uterus? The morula drops into the uterus. So this structure called morula drops into the uterus. And then we have the uterus itself. The uterus is a single organ situated in the abdomen behind the urinary bladder and in front of the rectum. So here we have taken a cut section of the female reproductive system. Here we have uterus and vagina fallopian tube and ovary. So ovary, fallopian tube, uterus and vagina. Just in front of the uterus is the urinary bladder. In front of the vagina is the urethra. Behind the uterus is the rectum. Behind the vagina is the anus. So here we have urinary bladder, urethra, when the bladder contracts, urine passes through the urethra. Similarly, rectum anus, when the rectum contracts, feces pass through the anus. And here we have vagina, where the penis is pushed inside and copulation takes place. So, front me kya pass ho hai? Urine. Piche kya pass ho hai? Stools. And what is put in between? the penis and what is that phenomenon called? Copulation. So where is the reproductive system? Behind the excretory system and in front of the digestive system. So reproductive system is situated behind the excretory system and in front of the digestive system. So if we have uterus vagina, what is present in front? urinary bladder and urethra for urine to pass out, 
behind we have rectum and anus for stools to pass out and between the excretory system and the digestive system is the reproductive system. So, where is the uterus situated? Behind the urinary bladder and in front of the rectum. The uterus is a single uterus is a single hollow empty pear shaped organ shaped like a pear fruit uh, shaped like an electric bulb broad above and narrow below this uterus hollow pear shaped single organ is about 3 inches in length 2 inches in breadth and 1 inch in thickness. Ovary, if you remember, was 3 by 2 by 1 centimeters. Uterus is 3 by 2 by 1 inches in dimension. And this uterus is very muscular and very, very distensible. Can you imagine? A uterus which is only 3 by 2 by 1 inches in the normal state when a baby starts developing inside the uterus becomes 2 feet by 1.5 feet by 1.5 feet in the ninth month you can see the lady having a maximum protrusion of her uterus and the uterus is so expanded there is a 54 centimeter baby inside surrounded by amniotic fluid so itna bada baby baju mein fluid so uterus has gone from 3 by 2 by 1 inches to 3 for 2 feet by 1 and a half feet by one and a half feet, why is it able to stretch so much? It is the most elastic organ of the entire human body and it is so elastic because it is very, very muscular. Because of its muscles, it is beautifully able to stretch. This uterus is made up of three distinct parts. There is fallopian tube and just above the fallopian tube is the dome shaped part above the fallopian tube. That dome shaped part above the fallopian tube is called as the fundus. So what is this part above the opening of fallopian tube called as the fundus. So this is the fundus. Then we have the main portion of the uterus which is called as the body of the uterus. That is called as the body of the uterus. And fundus, fundus ke niche is body. And then we have a lower narrow part which is called as the cervix of the uterus. So we have fundus, we have body, and we have cervix. The cervix of the uterus opens in the vagina. So who opens in the vagina? The cervix of the uterus. The cervix opens into the vagina. The junction of the body and the cervix is a narrow part that narrow part is called as the isthmus of the uterus. What is this narrow part between body and cervix called as the isthmus? Anything narrow is called isthmus. If you remember, fallopian tube ka narrow part was called as isthmus and uterus ke body or cervix ke beech mein ye jo narrow part hai that is also called as the isthmus. And the cervix as we are seeing is having a very nice appearance. 
uh, at the junction of the body with the cervix, it is quite narrow. And that narrow part is called as the internal off. Internal off. And this little opening into the vagina is called as the external off. So we have internal off and we have external off. The internal and external off is guarded by sphincters. So there are sphincters present like urethra has sphincters, even the cervix has got sphincters. Why is this beautiful shape present here? Now how nice nature has made this can you imagine this sir? The uterus throughout pregnancy will stretch. Which part of the uterus will stretch? The fundus will stretch and the body will stretch. Fundus or body stretch ho gaya. Will cervix stretch? Or ever cervix stretch ho gaya, the baby will abort. So sir, cervix will remain tight. Guarded by the two sphincters and the internal and external pause. Now the baby is nicely rotating inside a fluid called as the amniotic fluid. And just in the ninth month, 15 days before childbirth, the internal pause will relax. And as the internal ox will relax, the sphincter will dilate and now a beautiful cup shape is made. In this cup, which is concave, the baby while rotating, the head of the baby, which is convex, the convexity of the head fits into the concavity of the cervix. The convexity of the head fits into the concavity of the cervix and the baby gets rocked in the uterus. Once the head of the baby gets rocked, the baby's rotation will stop. So now the baby is not rotating and at one point in time, the uterus will powerfully contract and as the uterus contracts, the head of the baby will stretch the external off. Internal to stretch ho gaya tha, baby ka head lock ho gaya tha. Now when the uterus contracts, external off will also stretch and the head of the baby nicely passes through the vagina and the baby head will tap out through the vagina then the baby's face will come out through the vagina and the head and the face get delivered out then the baby rotates by 90 degrees and then the shoulder gets delivered out right shoulder and then the left shoulder gets delivered out and the entire baby beautifully passes out through the vagina Beautiful logic, this is the way childbirth or parturition takes place. Who helps in the rocking of the head, the stretching of the internal off will help in the head to get locked into the cervix. A cut section of the uterus. If we take uterus and take a cut section through it, it shows three layers. This is the outer layer, this is the middle muscular layer and we have an inner delicate layer. The outer layer is called as the perimetrium. Perimetrium. The middle is the muscular layer called as the myometrium. Myometrium and the inner is a delicate layer called as the endometrium. So we have perimetrium, myometrium, 
and endometrium. The perimetrium is the outer sealed layer, wet sticky layer. Why should the perimetrium be sticky? So, during pregnancy, the uterus will tremendously expand. And as it expands, it will come in contact with the stomach, with the liver, with the pancreas. And there will be a lot of friction. Who will prevent the friction? If you remember, perimetrium is sticky, full of mucus. It will act as a lubrication membrane and will prevent friction when the uterus will expand. The middle layer called as the myometrium is the muscular layer. It allows the uterus to expand during pregnancy and the same myometrium which allows the uterus to expand during pregnancy after 9 months the myometrium will contract and contraction of the myometrium helps the fetus to pass from the uterus through the vagina out of the female body and a phenomenon called as childbirth or parturition takes place. So which layer helps in childbirth? The myometrium, the muscular layer. And it is this inner delicate layer called as the endometrium which is very very important. Endometrium has in it lots of glands called as mucus glands which secrete mucus. There are glands which are called uterine glands which give out a sugary milky fluid called as uterine milk and lots of blood vessels are present. So there are mucus glands, uterine glands and blood vessels. Suppose a zygote is formed in the fallopian tube at the ciliary movement say it will form a morula and the morula will drop in the uterus. If the morula drops, morula will pass out from uterus to vagina. No sir, if you remember, endometrium has a lot of mucus glands which secrete a lot of sticky sticky mucus and no matter where the morula drops, the morula will stick because of mucus. So mucus helps in sticking of the morula. And then we have uterine gland which give out a milky sugary fluid called as uterine milk. And that uterine milk goes into the morula and morula may cells to hote hi hai. Along with cells, uterine milk will get accumulated and it forms a big structure which is now called as the Blastula. So what does the morula with uterine milk in it become a blastula? And blood vessels are present. The blastula makes attachment into the uterus which is called implantation. And on implantation, the blastula fixes into the uterus. And at that point, when it fixes in the uterus, develops a bag called as the placenta. And placenta say, a umbilical cord aata hai, which takes the nourishment all the way into the umbilical and into the fetus. So, which layer in the mother's uterus is full of blood vessels and supplies nourishment to the fetus via placenta and umbilical cord. The innermost layer called as the endometrium helps in providing nourishment to the fetus. Well, this is nice but a beautiful point and we take a break after this. If the egg is released and the egg is passing in fallopian tube with the help of cilia. If fertilization takes place, 
zygote will form modula, modula will form blastula, it will form a back called placenta and umbilical cord. But suppose ovulation takes place and fertilization does not take place. Say this is a virgin girl. She is around 12 years of age, 13, 14 years of age. She has not had a sexual intercourse. So there is no penis inserted. No ejaculation takes place. No sperm in the fallopian tube. That means the egg is unfertilized. Now, if the unfertilized egg drops into the uterus, will unfertilized egg stick here to form the modula and blastula? No sir, this is unfertilized egg. Hai. And as a matter of fact, as soon as the unfertilized egg drops into the uterus, the entire endometrium burst. Blood vessels rupture, mucous glands rupture, uterine glands rupture, blood, mucus, uterine milk and the unfertilized egg mix together and pass from the uterus through the vagina out of the female body and that phenomenon I'm sure you all have heard of it is called as menstruation has taken place. What is this phenomenon called as menstruation? All of you have heard of it. Girls after 12 to 14 years get their periods. They bleed through the vagina and what is that bleeding because of? Because of rupturing of the endometrium, the inner delicate layer full of blood vessels will burst carrying with it the unfertilized egg and what is the rupturing of endometrium along with blood and unfertilized egg a phenomenon called as menstruation takes place. I hope you all have understood that. Fine, we'll just take a small break over here and we continue with the other.